In this video, I'm gonna be revealing never before understood liquidity. Trust me, you will wanna stick around for this video because you would have never seen this anywhere else. Stay to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it to take profitable trades. Liquidity. We are gonna show you how to become a master at understanding liquidity better than 99% of other traders. I'm gonna be sharing with you today information that you've never seen before, you probably never knew before. And that is because I'm a very serious person when it comes to understanding markets, when it comes to understanding macroeconomics. So I'm gonna be sharing some things with you today that you haven't heard yet, and it's gonna be a really big game changer for you in your understanding of liquidity. Because liquidity isn't just stop losses. Liquidity isn't just retail. There is no such thing as you know the market makers manipulating your stop losses retail traders have this misconception that they're targeted it's not I'm gonna show you the truth and how this market really operates so what is liquidity liquidity in short is money right how liquid something is is how much money there is there so the definition of liquidity is the ease of transferring cash to an asset how easy are you able to transfer a cash into asset or an asset into cash? How easy is it to that transaction? The more liquidity, the more easy. So if you look at the Forex market, if you place a trade, it's likely that your trade will be executed at the price that you want it to be executed at, at the same moment that you execute it. Versus when you go to somewhere like the cryptocurrency market, which has less liquidity, and you go to an altcoin, which has less liquidity, you may not be so lucky to get that market that order filled at that exact price that you wanted it filled at at the exact moment you wanted it to get filled at. Maybe it gets filled higher or lower in terms of the price you get it at. That's called slippage, right? Slippage is when there isn't enough liquidity to facilitate your transaction at the desired price. So it facilitates it at a different price. Super, super simple to understand. But how do we translate that? How do we understand that deeper and translate that into being a better trader? We well, have to understand there is liquidity everywhere in the market. And how we're going to perceive liquidity is essentially just the orders that are in the market. You have to understand what this market is. There are things called market makers, and those are your interbank markets. They are essentially your large institutions, your central banks. And what they do is they have algorithms designed for one sole purpose, collect the orders. So wherever the orders are, price will algorithmically, like a magnet to metal, gravitate to collect those orders. That is the role of this job. So that is why a lot of retail traders feel targeted. It's because the algorithm is designed to go and collect the most orders. So where are the most orders in the market? They are at your typical retail levels. Now, why is that? It's because everywhere you go, right, everywhere you look at the market makers, for example, like a broker, the job of a broker is to be a market maker. That is to say, to provide liquidity to you at all times that you need it. So whenever you place a buy, they will place a sell. Whenever you place a sell, they will place a buy because they provide you the liquidity to get into that market. So they do the opposite of you. It's called B-booking, right? A lot of you may be familiar with the concept of B-booking. Essentially, the market makers take the opposite trades to you. That is why when you go onto these brokerage accounts and a lot of them have free courses and free information that are marketed in such a way, I'm going to make you a good trader. No, they're not. They're not going to make you a good trader because if they make you a good trader, then they're going to provide in the liquidity to you, lose money, right? So they give you all these retail concepts so that they can make your behavior predictable. So how do they do that? They teach you things like trend lines, they teach you things like double bottoms, and they teach you things like breakouts, which we're going to be looking at right now. So let's get into the actual retail liquidity that we're talking about when we're actually trading. And I have three different types right here, but there are many different types. We're going to cover these three extensively. So we have scenario number one, both buying and selling side. Now we have to understand that every low and at every high, there is liquidity. Why? Because there are orders there. There are always orders at highs and lows. There are always stop losses at highs and lows. Different scenarios require different four patterns. Different four patterns are for different traders. So when you see price come down into here right now, what do we have? We have what? We have long orders, people that want to buy at the lows, and we have sell orders, people that want to trade the breakout. So we know that in this area right here, there is a lot of what? Orders, which means what? Liquidity. There are just large amounts of liquidity at these highs and at these lows. The same is then true for double bombs, right? What are you taught 
typically speaking you're taught that on the third or whatever it is you know this is an area of support it's a double bottom it's gonna hold so what happens you put your orders in okay and the orders are supposed to go like that but when you put your orders in there and your stop loss is below the lows or you have breakout traders who put their entries below the lows so they can trade the short breakout well what happens that simply means there is a bunch of liquidity built up in that area and if the market's job is algorithmically you have a data sheet right that tells you all of the orders and there is an algorithm designed on that data to move so the central banks have been able to commit capital meaning to buy or sell as much quantity of the asset that they need to move price to go and collect those orders you understand what I'm saying? So when you see pockets of liquidity, you can be sure that at that point the algorithm has picked up where the most liquidity is at that very one moment and they are deploying their sell orders to go and capture that liquidity. Not to manipulate you to, to fulfill the purpose of the market, which is to allow everybody fair access to transact currencies. So don't be a victim. Don't believe that the market makers are out here to stop loss me. No, you're just putting your stop losses in the wrong areas. You have to learn these things so you avoid making those mistakes. So we have our second type of liquidity, which is the equal lows. And then one of the most common is, of course, your trend line liquidities. The more a trend builds up, the more liquidity builds up in this area. And so, of course, as we know, the more likely that price is to come into this area and take out that liquidity. What you have to understand, another thing is, is that the banks, right, the interbank or the um, central bank that owns this algorithm, they're putting up liquidity for you at all times. So as price trends upwards and many buys are coming in, well, they're also doing what? They are putting in the cells to provide that liquidity. So the higher the price comes up, the more of a drawdown, the more of an unrealized loss that that has on the bank's balance sheet. That means the more price goes up, the more they're facilitating those buy orders, the more money that they're theoretically losing because banks don't close their positions in a loss, typically speaking. They don't have to trade with a stop loss because they have all the money in the world. So what they do is they allow price to go for a while until they decide at whatever point because the more price goes up then the more liquidity becomes on the lower side of the market so when they build up that liquidity and they shift price to come and collect all of that liquidity later what are they able to do they're able to close off those losing buy those losing cells that they were taking to facilitate the transaction for the buyers so when price comes back down it's not only coming to collect more liquidity, but it's also coming so that they can mitigate their losses or their unrealized losses so that they don't appear as losses on their balance sheet. And this is why the market always goes up and down, up and down, and it will always come back to fill price in certain liquidity areas. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what this is going to look like now on the actual markets themselves. And you can see firsthand how we interpret liquidity and how the always price comes back to fill these different areas of liquidity. So remember, liquidity is where there is orders in the market. So we're going to take a look at this picture right here, right? GU for our time frame. And we're going to eye up all of the different areas of liquidity and just watch how price reacts to them. And then you will start to understand the you know this there is no accident everything is done by design so you can see right here price has a low and price has this huge bullish momentum to the upside now number one which we didn't just cover is when price does this what happens for every buyer there needs to be a seller so every time someone puts a buy order in the central banks have to be there or the brokers and typically how it goes is you have the brokers that we trade on and then we have prime brokers they're the broker of the broker and then you have the interbank. They provide the liquidity to the prime brokers and the prime brokers provide the liquidity to the retail brokers. And the retail brokers um, provide the liquidity to retail traders, right? People like us or larger institutions. So every time price is increasing, but for whatever reason that many people are buying or institutions are buying at that point, what happens? The market makers, the ones who have complete control just because they have the power, they have all of the money to do so, they are running at a loss. So if you look at this, we call it the liquidity void. You can see that this right here 
right? We use these kind of like triangles. As price goes up, it creates space. Every time there is space, that is typically seen as liquidity. And the reason for that is, is because the more price moves up, the more of a loss that the bank goes into at that one given time. And also the more liquidity that gets built on the sell side, because the more price goes up, right, like so, then the more there is becoming less less buyers because price is moving higher. Take it for example, let's say you have you know um, two apples, and the the price for the apple from here to here is five dollars. Well, you have a lot of buyers, right? Cool. And then let's say now the five dollar apples are finished. Now we have this price to this price right here. Apples are now seven dollar fifty. So we still have buyers for them. We still have people that want them, but they're not getting as good as a price as the buyers down here. And then price moves up to here. And now we are in the $10 range for an Apple. And all of a sudden, there are becoming less and less buyers willing to buy those Apples at $10. Now they're kind of looking and going, you know what, maybe I'll wait until they come back down to $7.50. Maybe I'll wait until they come back down to $5. And typically what you're seeing is you're seeing the people that are selling, they're like, hold on a minute. I don't think apples should be at ten dollars so they're overpriced so what i'm going to do is i'm going to short because i'm looking at this as like there's not as many buyers so if i short now then i could push price down because there aren't as many buyers now and make a profit so more sellers come in and more buyers go out and if there's less buyers and more sellers what's price going to do price is going to come down and so that's all we're doing is we're understanding the mechanism of the market with truth right we're not understanding and trying to understand all of these chart patterns and indicators that don't give us the truth behind why the market does what it does that's why we trade this style of trading it's pure price action built on the understanding the true understanding of the economics behind this and who runs this market years and years of study of history and banks and all of this sort of stuff have led us to the understanding that this is how the market works so that's essentially what happens and as price comes down people start to appear a more fairer value based on what it is so the more price goes up the less buyers there become and the more sellers there becomes hence why price comes back down to rebalance price so not only do we have more sellers but we also have the banks that are essentially picking up all of the people that are going to be looking to put orders in at these lower prices like when price comes back down there then i'll buy the apples right it's no different so what does price do it comes to collect those orders why because there becomes less and less orders up here and more and more orders here and all the bank's job is to do is go and collect those orders sorry the algorithm that the bank owns go and collect the orders and at that moment where those orders get collected the banks are able to do what mitigate their losses they're able to now go you know what okay cool all of those cells that we took to be able to provide people the liquidity we can now start closing those because the liquidity has already been provided and now they're at break even let's just close them and how the banks make the money is not by being right or wrong they make what we know as the spread it's the difference between the bid and ask so that is the market makers reward for providing liquidity they get the difference between the bid and the ask price, between you know the price that the currency's at versus the price you're gonna to have to pay for it. It's like a premium, and that is how they make their money. That's why they do this. So, yeah, again, this is a liquidity void. You can see that that liquidity void gets filled. Again, understanding what we just explained, why price came down. Now let's take a look into some liquidity concepts. Well, number one, what can you see forming here? Relatively equal highs or a trend line. So we understand that there is liquidity here. Okay, cool. There's liquidity there. Where else is there liquidity? Well, price comes down, bottoms out once, starts pushing up, bottoms out again, starts pushing up. Well, what do we have there? We have equal lows. So we have equal lows right here, or as some traders might call it, support level. So we have liquidity. And what does the market do? Look at this very carefully. As the liquidity comes in here and you have the breakout traders that want to sell when it breaks and you have other people that are long in with their stop losses below this area, what does the market do? The market just comes and collects that liquidity with that wick and then shoots off where? To the other areas of liquidity because once there is no more liquidity down here or in here, the liquidity now is up here. So now it's going to go and collect that liquidity which it does. You can see price runs up. And then another thing, again, what does price do? Price starts building as price comes, taps in here, has the momentum out, 
comes back up here, starts wicking it, you can very clearly see it. What does that do? It gives incentivization that perhaps maybe price is gonna start coming for a pullback. It creates areas of liquidity in that area. What does price do? Price goes and runs up the highs and then pulls back. Why does price pull back? Price pulls back because there is a void that gets created. The more that they buy, the more they need to come back and rebalance that price to mitigate their losses and provide the liquidity to people that are like, I don't want to buy up here, but I will buy in here. I will buy in here. They bring price back to collect those orders. Again, what then happens? Price comes bottoms out and then you start seeing what? Price building a trend line which is what we know as liquidity. There are lots of people placing orders under here, under this low, under this low, under this low. So we build up an area of liquidity and also understanding that every every high, right, and every low, as we just explained, is also liquidity. Why? Because we're expecting that we have breakout traders and we have people that put their stop losses above here that are shorted. Same for here. We have the breakout traders that will sell when this level gets broken. And we also have people that are, are longing in this area and they are putting their stop losses underneath here. And so there's no victimization. The market makers aren't here. Let everybody manipulate and steal from the retail traders. No, it's just providing it what it's supposed to do. Collect the orders. It's that simple. So price builds a huge amount of liquidity. We build liquidity up here and liquidity down here. What does price do? Price runs first into this area of liquidity, collects the liquidity, and then what happens then? There's no more liquidity up there. So let's go and capture this liquidity down here. And so price comes and catches all of that liquidity. And again, it's also macro and micro. If we zoom out for a second, right, what do we see? We see price has this huge run up, right? And then if you look at this, all this empty space right here is a liquidity void. It needs to be rebalanced. Price needs to be rebalanced for the bank's books. So what happens? Price also comes back down, rebalances the books. At the same time, it also does the exact same thing on a micro level. If you actually just zoom in and we take a look at it from a zoomed in perspective, we have the exact same thing on a lower level. That's because it's fractal, right? Price pushes up and then we have the void and the void gets filled, right? If we didn't have this half on the right side, all you would see is price going up which would mean there is an imbalance of orders. There's an imbalance of liquidity on the bank's books and also there's an imbalance of buy and sell orders. Now there's probably more sell orders. So price comes and rebalance and facilitates the liquidity to be able to create a fair price in the market. That's the point. So price comes and collects all of this liquidity in here, comes, stops once, pushes up. What is this? Again, micro and macro. Micro because traders trade all time frames. There's liquidity and all time frames. It's all one big data feed, compartmentalized, fractalized on individual time frames. That's it. It's one data feed, just fractaled into multiple different time frames. All a time frame is is a specific view of the overall data. That's it. So price comes up and creates what are these? Equal highs or resistance. So what does that do? That is liquidity. So what does the market do? The market runs into that liquidity. Okay, the liquidity is gone now. Where's where's the next level of liquidity? Well, we have relatively what? Relatively equal, relatively equal lows right there. And then we have complete equal lows right here. So we create liquidity in here. What happens? Price comes in, pushes out, collects that liquidity, comes back, creates liquidity, pushes out, and then comes and takes out the liquidity and then moves to the other side. And then at the same time, what are we building again? Well, as price does that, what's it starting to do? It's starting to trend down. We're starting to build the trend line liquidity, more areas of liquidity. And at the same time, internally, the internal liquidity, what we built here? Relatively equal lows, which is what? Liquidity. We see price tap in, push out, tap in, push out, inducement. We come, collect the liquidity, then move off, creating more liquidity above this trend line. Then what happens? Price begins to range. A range is usually a buildup of liquidity on both sides. So typically speaking, it will build liquidity on both sides of the market at all time. You can see the first area of liquidity, trend lines or 
support whatever kind of traders are looking at it as. And then the second type of liquidity, which is what? The trend line. The, we have a downward trend line and an upward trend line at the same time. Just building the liquidity. Then what does price do? Price runs into one area of liquidity, comes back, creates more liquidity, moves away, giving people the ideology that you know price is going down, inducing more liquidity, and then comes and runs up into this liquidity and this liquidity. Why? Okay, every low also has a liquidity. So there's liquidity down here, there was liquidity at this low. We take out this level of liquidity, create a low, push up, create more buy side liquidity. So now we have one area of buy side liquidity and two areas of buy side liquidity. And not only do we just have that area of liquidity, we also have this huge void. Price has been on this downtrend now, which means what? Price needs to be rebalanced. They need to rebalance their books. So how do they do that? They just push price up so that they can rebalance the books. They can provide liquidity also to the buyers. And the people that have orders up in these areas are sellers. So it's just about where are the most orders in the market at that given time. And that is where the market is going to gravitate, gravitate itself to by design. Because the more orders they can fulfill, the more money they make on spread. It's that simple. So what then happens? Price creates more liquidity here, more liquidity here. We have a bunch of liquidity in this area as well. And we've just taken out the main areas of liquidity down here. We have this lowest liquidity. What do we do? All the breakout traders take out the liquidity. Okay, at that point, now where is all the liquidity? All of the liquidity on the sell side has been taken. Taken, 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 right? Now where's all the liquidity? One, two, three. So what does that mean? Well, it makes sense then price would go and get where the other orders are, where the more important orders are. So what does price do? Price starts moving to the upside to collect that liquidity, whilst at the same time taking and building liquidity. It always doing the same thing. So what happens? Price runs into this liquidity, creates a liquidity void because price has been running up too much, and then has some level of pullback to mitigate. It will come back and mitigate more at a later date additionally. What does price do? Price creates relatively equal lows as an area of what? Liquidity. Then what does it do? It runs into that area of liquidity. And at the same exact time, it builds liquidity on the other side of the market, right? It builds what? Liquidity on the other side of the market so that we can go and run that liquidity. Then what happens? Price creates relatively equal highs right here, or equal highs right here, or resistance on lower time frame, has the push down, and then does what? Runs into that area of liquidity, runs into that area of liquidity, and then back out. Then price creates this liquidity, doesn't yet run it. Again, we also have this kind of you know liquidity void as well. This is uh, essentially liquidity. The higher price gets, this also becomes liquidity in terms of it needs to price needs to be rebalanced there's a purpose for price to come down there i always look at liquidity as cause and effect right because if the market has a purpose which is to collect orders and all of life is cause and effect meaning there has to be some reason for something to happen then the reason for price moving to certain areas is because of liquidity so the cause of price moving to certain areas is a liquidity. Liquidity is the biggest misunderstood concept and the missing key for most traders. And this is what I'm showing you right now. This is why. So let's continue. We've built liquidity on the buy side, taking it. Liquidity on the buy side, taking it. So what are we doing? As price moves higher, we're building more and more liquidity to the downside, right? It's super, super simple. So as price moves back up again, we're building more liquidity voids. Price moves to the high. We come down, we start building this internal you know, uh, trend line in here, relatively equal lows as an area of liquidity. We also take out this high right here, which as we know, every high and low is liquidity just because of breakouts and all sorts of stop losses. So what do we do? We run, we create this as an area of liquidity. We run the final point of liquidity. Then once the buy side liquidity is done, at this point also, what have we just done? We've just filled all of the void in here. So now the market's looking at it and the algorithm's going, okay, cool, I've fulfilled my purpose. I've done my job on this side of the market. Where are the other orders? And then it starts triggering. Okay, there's orders X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Let me go and facilitate them. So what does price do? Price fulfills its purpose on collecting all the buy orders, which were in here, 
uh, all the orders to the buy side, which are all in this area, all in above these highs, above these highs, in this area. And once it does that, now it's like, okay, cool, change direction, like a robot, literally an algorithm. Where the, Where's the liquidity? The liquidity is at these lows. The liquidity is in this overall void. Price has been on this uptrend, and what has it done? As price goes up, the market makers have had to provide the opposing area of liquidity. So they need to bring price back now so that they can rebalance their books. All of this space that you see in here is what that is. And so what does price do? It has a purpose. It's sell liquidity, sell side liquidity, sell side liquidity. Okay, it's time to sell, right? So what does price do? Price pushes price down and starts collecting all of the liquidity on the sell side. That's it. That is the purpose of the algorithm. That is what it does. So if you can get a grasp on liquidity and tie it into other things like structure, like supply and demand, you have the three pillars, the three pillars of your foundation to become an immensely profitable trader. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to learn more about liquidity, more about using liquidity with other things as well, you can essentially check out more of what we do. I hope you guys enjoyed how we can apply what we've just learned into real market conditions and get into positions. And we're also going to be combining everything we've just learned, liquidity, with supply and demand and the different types of structure, how to create ideas. So nonetheless, let's get into it. Essentially, the first and most important thing, of course, is always structure. So what you want to do is create your structure ranges. You know, swing structure, we have our low here, we have a higher high, higher low, and then higher high. So we have our uptrend that we're running price into. Let's imagine we're trading only this piece of price because the entries and positions come into this part of price. So we have our uptrend. Now you wanna build out your trading range. Trading range is simple. It's the high and low that price is trading between, right? So you have two facts. You have your trading between this high and this low and you have that price is in an uptrend. So if you have that, you understand that price is most likely going to come and run this high as opposed to taking out this low because price is bullish this is targeted this is protected that's the simple that's essentially the understanding the mechanics of if this then that we understand we're building out our foundation we're building up our idea we have our trading range next we're going to build out our premium and discount we understand that we want to be looking for longs again if we want to be looking for longs again we're going to be looking for longs in the pre in the discount area of price it's that simple. So, okay, now we have our we have our premium discount, we have our trading range, and we have our directional bias. Now we can start looking at liquidity and the different types of structure because you can still trade short in between a bullish range. You're trading the pullback, right? So essentially what we can understand is price come up, created a level, equal highs, had some reaction to the downside. What did that do? It created liquidity. What did price then do? Price comes across, taps into that area of liquidity and then has a pullback. When price pulls back, it creates what? Relatively equal lows or completely equal lows in this scenario, which is our liquidity. At the same time, price also builds what? Trendline liquidity. So we have liquidity to the sell side. And what have we just done? We've taken out all of the liquidity now to the buy side. So just by liquidity factors alone, we understand then that price is, you know, losing its purpose to need to go higher and gaining more reason to go lower. Liquidity, cause and effect. So that's all well and good, but you know, you can never predict based just off liquidity. You have to understand structure. And when structure tells you that the orders of buy to sell, sell to buy have shifted, then, then you're really in it. So we want us to understand our internal structure. Price tops out, starts creating a series of internal lower lows, creates a new higher high, creates a higher low, creates a higher high, creates a lower low, and then creates a new higher high. So our internal structure range is this low to this high. Then what does price do? Price takes out the low and causes an internal change of character. The internal change of character gives us reason to believe that price is going to go and trade lower, having its pullback. Right, so now we understand that price has changed character, just tapped into this area of liquidity, and then pushed up. Now we still have all of this area of liquidity in here. Not only do we have that area of liquidity, we have this huge area of liquidity void. 
of where people have orders, of where price needs to come and rebalance itself because it's essentially been on this uptrend for a period of time. Market makers have had to put up the liquidity to be able to facilitate those orders. So what does that mean? It simply means that now price could rebalance itself so the banks, so the algorithm can rebalance its book. Not to mention the fact that they're just a bunch of orders down at these levels because people want to be buying in the discount. There are so many reasons for price to come back and then continue to go higher. So we're just understanding and taking the raw data, the real data, the truth of what's actually happening that's indistinguishable, it's clearly in front of you, and making sense of it. So uh, why have I drawn out this box? This box is a point of interest. A point of interest simply just means an area of price that you would be looking for a reaction out of or potential area that if certain things happen, you'll get into the market. Why have we selected it? It's an order block. We're simply looking for an order block in the discount of the swing structure. So for those of you who know, of course, what an order block is, it's simply right here. You can see the sell to buy that momentum came out of that created a level of imbalance. If you don't know what an order block is, go and check our other videos, or we do teach this very extensively in our mentorship program. So price essentially, after it changes character, it has a pullback. Where does it pull back to? It pulls back to a trading range. A trading range, essentially, of orders, of short orders to the downside. Price changes character, builds a trading range, price comes back up, mitigates the trading range, and then continues. Doing more. Having another break of structure to the downside. Break of structure down. And then it bottoms out. It creates the low down here. So again, internal structure. Lower low, higher high. Lower low, lower high, lower low. Now we have a new trading range. We have the high to the low. Not only that, what does price actually do? Price has, the lower it gets, it's starting to build what? Liquidity. It's starting to build liquidity on the buy side. Liquidity, it's built up an area of liquidity in here. Not only is it built up the liquidity, but it's also built up a void. It builds up a void of also needing to rebalance price. So after the break of structure, we understand that typically speaking, price will pull back into the top 50% of price. So price is gonna pull back up into here at some point. We also have a ton of liquidity and a void. That is reason for price to come and sit in and collect orders from in this area. And it can do that before it goes long. It also doesn't have to, it didn't have to come back up here, but we can still position ourselves and get into the market or put an order on that if we get tagged, great. If we don't get tagged, sometimes you don't get tagged, great awesome it doesn't really matter we're just essentially just playing out our mechanical plan day in day out so now we need to have a point of interest this is going to be the area where you're going to take the position you're just going to use the order block the most recent buy to sell that broke structure it's that simple price needs to have an area of liquidity to come and facilitate those orders and at the same time what does price do price comes and builds liquidity on the sell side so as price does that it gives a cause for price to go lower now we have what we have the buy side liquidity that's now been taken but we have the sell side liquidity and we have the point of interest which is a possible area price could trade into based on an order block so that would be where you would look to take your position out of again typically speaking we will use the one minute time frame to get extra confirmation higher risk to reward uh, smaller stop loss etc but for the purpose of this video we're going to be just using the 15 minute so we have a a position that we're able to take 1 to 5.83 where are we targeting number one we're looking we know there's liquidity number two target the point of interest if you're expecting that price could make its way back into this area then put your bets on it again once price takes out the low anyway because internal structure is bearish so until internal structure shifts bullish we're still expecting price to go down in the short term at least until it's met with an order block, a reason for price to reverse. So once price breaks the lows, essentially you move stops to break even and then let the rest ride out. So we break lows, stops break even, price pulls back, does what? It taps into this order block and then puts in another lower low and then finally hits TP 1 to 5.8, simple. What happens then is price has taken up all the sell side liquidity. We have now filled the void and we've taken out all the sell side liquidity. Liquidity taken, liquidity taken, liquidity taken, liquidity taken, 
right? All the lows, liquidity taken. And now we've tapped into this. There's no more liquidity. There's no need for price to go lower. But what have we done? Whilst price was coming down, we've actually, if we just remove this for the time being, we've actually built up what? We've built liquidity. We've built relatively equal highs or, you know, trend line liquidity to the downside. We've built equal highs in here. Liquidity. And we have, obviously, just our swing point liquidity. So now where is the liquidity? And we also have, of course, the liquidity void. As prices come down, price has been able to create, what? This void. So we have what? Now, everything stacks up. Externally, bullish. Liquidity, buy side. We're in the discount and we've tapped into an order block. All we need now is an internal shift. We need to see the internal, because internal right now is still bearish. But once we make a higher high, like we do right here, well, now we've made a higher high, price can essentially go up. Price can go and take the highs. So we have a change of character. So when the internal realigns, we called it an OFB, order flow, uh, OFR, order flow realignment, when the internal aligns with the external, what can we do? We can look at taking price higher. We can look at now essentially going long. Now, where would you take that long from? Well, if we see right here, we have an area of supply. Price taps into, into supply, pulls out, and then changes character. So where was it that actually caused the break to happen? Now we have, of course, the what we call the origin of the move and what we call the decisional, right, of the move. The origin is the original point of demand that came in. The decisional is the, the deciding area of demand that changed character. So we would look at taking our position at the decisional area. Where would you take your position? Entry, stops under the area point of interest. And where would you look to target? You're just looking to take out the swing high up here, one to 6.5. Now, this is just, you know, one of those situations, but price tags us in, break structure. Again, at the point in which we break structure, we go to what? Break even. So we move stops to break even, and then price comes back down, tags us out at break even, and then continues higher. And that's just something you can't do. And then price comes down and does what? Collects all of the internal liquidity that it was building so that that liquidity could fulfill the buy, the move to the upside, to collect what? All of the other liquidity, because what happened? Price tapped into what? Liquidity. So where's the other liquidity? It was here. Then once that liquidity is taken, where's the other liquidity? It's here, it's here, and it just takes it. And so that's essentially how price developed, and that is how we're able to use this to understand and navigate the market. Now, of course, not every trade you're gonna take is gonna be correct. Some are also gonna be losers. But I'm just giving you a realistic insight into how you can use this stuff to approach price action. And more importantly, how you can just understand what price is doing. Congratulations on making your way to the end of this video. That tells me that you are a serious trader. And we are looking for five new serious traders like yourself to join our mentorship program. Links are down below, sign up today, and I'll see you hopefully on the inside.